Undina, Christian Petzold's newest film. And Dave, I know that you watched uh, Petzold's film before this. Give me a little recap of that one. Yeah, so Christian Petzold is a well-known, uh, long-storied career German film director and hadn't seen anything he had made until his 2019 film, Transit, which I believe is still available on Prime right now. Transit, uh, notably, also stars uh, Franz Rogowski and Paula Bear, who are the stars of Undina. And that movie, I think, is tremendous. I absolutely recommend it. Um, one of those movies, like, I caught, like, I, I knew people liked it all year, didn't really catch it to, like, the holiday break time of the year. But uh, really good because it's, it's a really cool story, honestly. Like, it's about people trying to escape the Nazis and like the other two characters kind of crossing paths. Like it's not a, there's no war. There's no battle scene. It's not a war movie. It's a drama with like that kind of backdrop of people trying to flee the city and end up getting stuck in uh, Marseille and really interesting, really good script. And uh, Rogowski in particular, I think really stands out um, in terms of like just characters meeting and passing in the night and whether they want to stick to together or stick out for themselves kind of thing so i I definitely recommend uh transit and i was really excited to uh uh, see undina you know him making another movie so soon um this i know this uh debuted at the berlin film festival back in 2020 which i believe was the last film festival to like take place in the before times and paula bear actually won the uh best actress award at the festival that year so I i was excited to see this we finally got it here in the u.s on vod it had come out in germany last june a year ago <laughs> and uh definitely does not uh, hold a candle to transit to me i was quite <laughs> underwhelmed with Undina. unfortunately it's a, uh, I i guess a, a theme of his film mo- filmography from what i understand is that vagueness comes into play often but to me with undina the storytelling uh, just doesn't quite gel all together like there, I think there's a lot of like cool pieces to this film, but I don't know if it like transcends. And I thought tra- uh, Transit really got to a high level by the end. Of the, at the end, like you're really wrapped in. I, I don't know if I was as, as engaged with uh, this story this time around. Yeah, Undina for me, um, I think the parts I respected and and definitely was most engaged with was just the chemistry between Paula Beer and Franz Rogowski. You know, um, I think their romance really uh, thrives off the fact that those two as actors seem to just have a lot of on-screen chemistry and it kind of crackles when they have their real emotional moments. Mm -hmm. Um, I think where things were pretty tough, it was, uh, you know, obviously there's, it's just like a dark fantasy if you needed to put a label onto the genre. And that fantasy aspect, like you mentioned, is kind of put in there in such a interpretive and um, vague way. And uh, especially, I think the second half of the story really left me trying to grapple with what Petzold wanted me to take away from this film and I ultimately left feeling a little bit confused so I I think we're kind of on the same page that the vagueness of this didn't necessarily um, work as well this time I also gotta say Rogowski looks just like Paul uh, Metzkel to me (laughs) yeah I mean like the same facial yeah he he also became a sex symbol in germany funny enough much like how mescal has uh exploded in the past year (laughs) that's funny funny comp yeah so i I think you mentioned before we started recording that this is based on a a story of uh the same name like a myth of the same name is that right yeah like not something i'm super aware but like undina in europe is a like a, a female like sea nymph and like the whole it's kind of the whole um very similar to, the, I guess, the key like over thing overhanging on the plot of the film is that this water nymph becomes human when she falls in love with a man but is doomed to die or something bad will happen if that man is unfaithful to her. So like in the very beginning of this movie, 
Undina says that she would have to kill her soon to be ex boyfriend Johannes, yeah. Johannes, if he like leaves her, right? Mm-hmm. And like <laughs> you don't, I think you, you don't know going in. Like, are, am I supposed to take that literally? And I think that's kind of an issue with the film. Is by the end of the movie, I still don't really know if I'm supposed to take any all this literally mm-hmm. because it never doesn't fully commit to like the fantastical elements. Like going into this, like just knowing this, the the broad strokes, I actually thought like she was gonna like look like a mermaid at one point or something. That does not yeah, happen same. at all, honestly. You know, and oh. on, I think the story of like Undina not actually getting over the past relationship when she's in this new relationship that she's happy with, obviously highlighted by that scene on like the bridge or like the walkway by the water where she has to look back at her ex-boyfriend when she walks by him down the path Mm -hmm. right like maybe if we didn't have the trappings of the fantastical elements it might have felt like a tighter story i don't know um i think the key to like this movie working for someone is they have to be invested in that relationship between christoph and undina and Mm -hmm. definitely the acting is definitely off the chops like they have great chemistry so you have to be invested in that relationship i think because otherwise like there's just some vagaries to it, man, you know? Like and sometimes it's really nice to look at. Like I think the scenes like where you're watching the train move, like there he's chasing yeah. her on the platform before she goes away. Like some good moments, but like plotting wise, I, it was a little hard for me to invest in. Yeah, and you know, it's it's really also tied into the idea of like Berlin's structural building history. Yes. And there's a lot of like lecture of that, which mm-hmm. at times is pretty fascinating. Yeah. But also like the model was having... awesome. <laughs> yeah, it was. And, it, you know, I think it's a real achievement that they took this like speech that probably for a lot of people could be seen as boring. I thought it was pretty fascinating in some events, especially some of the specific themes that she was talking about. But then having to not only understand this like, vague fantasy story that's woven in with this love story um but then also what he's trying to say in terms of metaphor about like building structure and changing buildings but not necessarily changing certain aspects of a city it's uh it's a lot of there's a lot of layers to it so probably a film that would benefit from multiple watchings but then again i don't know if this is a film that i would want to necessarily revisit right away again Mm -hmm. but um you know, I, I give uh, Petzl a lot of credit because, um, you know, this is the type of artistic film that I think uh, can be really rewarding and obviously makes you think. I mean, we're like talking about the different layers of it right now, and I think we're going to get to a, a movie in a second that's a little bit less thought provoking. So I, I you know, I, I appreciate that, you yeah. know, what he's what he's going for here, for sure. You know, I got to say, it doesn't it feel like one day. Uh, Rogowski, friends Rogowski, he's gonna pop up in some like yeah. big time like auto driven film. Like he was in Malik's last movie, Hidden Life, but like maybe like show up little... in a Nolan film as like yeah, maybe someone who's a little more mainstream at this point. Like even Quentin Tarantino, right? Like Quentin Tarantino, yeah. you know he's seen every Petzl movie and he fucking <laughs> loves it. And I'm sure he's been on the Rogowski train for a while, right? So I'm sure we'll see him in in Hollywood eventually.